Hello and welcome to lesson 13 in this tutorial series on learning how to program using Scratch. Now in the last few lessons we've looked at repeating blocks using iteration, either definite or indefinite, and in previous lessons we've also looked at strings and how we can use and get uh, text from the user. Now we're going to combine these two things in today's lesson, looking at string length, so how much text the user has given us, and then doing something with that number uh, using a loop. So let's have a little look at um, an example program here we're going to put together. So I have my little red triceratops in the middle there, and I'm going to grab the green flag block and put that in the middle for the start. Now we're going to get the uh, name from the user, so we'll grab from the sensing block the ask what's your name, and of course that's going to end up being dropped inside Scratch's built-in answer box, but we'll want to store that somewhere, so we'll make a variable for that, and we'll get rid of the one they've built in for us, make our own variable, and call it name, since that's what's going to be um, it's going to be storing. So we'll set the name variable to whatever the answer is the user has given us. So now we've asked them for the name and we've stored it. Now at this point, what we can do is find out how long their name is, how many letters or characters there are in their name. And we're going to tell them that. So we're going to just simply tell them the number of letters in their name. How do we do that? How can we work out how long a string is? Well, the answer is in the operators box here on the left. We've got operators and look down all these green blocks here. You'll see that we have one called length of apple, which sounds really weird. Why would you need to know how wide an apple was? Well, it's not actually looking at an apple and measuring how wide it is. What it's doing is looking at the word apple and counting the number of characters in it. So how many letters or characters are there in the word apple? That's what it's doing. But of course, we don't want to know how long the word apple is. What we want is to know how long the name is the user's entered, which of course is stored in the variable name. So let's just drag that in there and replace apple with the user's name. So we can now run this program and let's just run that click the green flag, what's your name? Let's type in Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N, press enter, and there we are, we've got six letters. Now I say letters, but actually that's not quite true. Strings do contain or can contain letters, but they can also contain any other symbol on your keyboard. So for example, let's run this again, and let's type in Amy Lee. Now Amy Lee has six letters in her name, A-M-Y, L-E-E. -E. But that's not the answer it's going to give us because the computer will look at everything we've typed, all the keys we've pressed. And although I've pressed those six letters, I've also pressed another key on the keyboard and that of course is the space. And as far as the computer is concerned, the space is just another character in the string. So when I press enter, we get seven. And in fact, if I was to use a whole variety of symbols here, let's do A, B, C, one, two, three, comma, comma, dot, um, and a couple of spaces and a question mark. There we are, press enter, 13, it's got all of them. So as far as the computer's concerned, it doesn't really mind what keys you press on a keyboard. If it knows it's just a string, it's just text, then it doesn't really worry about the symbols. And even the numbers I type in, again, are just symbols as far as the computer is concerned. Now, what can we do once we've got the length of the name? Okay, we can tell them how many letters there are in their name, that's fine. But let's do something else with that. What I want to do now is to combine knowing how long a string is with a loop that we looked at in the last couple of lessons. So we're going to repeat something, and what we're going to repeat is the letters in their name. We're going to spell the name for them one letter at a time. So if I was to enter in Justin, it would then uh, say J, then U, then S, and just one letter at a time like that. So if we know how many letters there are in their name, and we will know that because we can use this length of name block, which type of loop is it that we're going to have to use? 
Now in the last two lessons we've looked at both types of loop, the definite loop where we know definitely how many times we need to repeat something, and an indefinite loop where we don't know, have no idea how many times we need to repeat something if we need to repeat it at all. So which of those loops do you think is the right one, definite or indefinite? If you said indefinite, I'm afraid that's not right. It is a definite loop. A definite loop because we'll know definitely how long their name is because they've typed it in and we can use this length of block to know definitely before we start the loop how many letters there are in the name. So let's go to the uh, control section and grab the repeat block which has a number in it, but of course we don't want that number 10. We want to replace that with whatever the length of the name is. So if we type in a four letter name, then it's going to repeat the next instruction four times. We type in an eight letter name. It's going to repeat this eight times. So yes, the number of times it repeats will be different each time we run the program, but each time we run the program, we're giving the computer the length of our name by typing it in, so it will know at that point definitely how many times to repeat. So what are we going to be doing now? Well, we're going to be saying each letter of their name. So we're going to have to have a say block in there. So say what? Well, say each letter of the name. How do we do that? Let's go back into operators again, and just above the length of block, you can see we have the letter one of Apple. So this is where we can pick which letter or which character in their name to pull out and use. So if I drop that in there, it's gonna simply give me the first letter of Apple. Well, we don't want that. We want the first letter of their name, like that. But that'll give me the first letter, but what about the second letter? What about that? Well, we could, um, you know, have a duplicate and just simply say letter two, but then of course, we've got this block repeating here already. We're not really doing that. We don't want to have to put in a repeated instruction if we already have a repeat block. So what we want is instead of having this number one here, to replace that with a counter that will start at one, and then each time we repeat the block, we add one to the counter. So let's make a new variable. We'll call this counter, like this. And at the beginning, we'll just be before the loop begins, we'll set that counter to one. So that's gonna be position one, the first position in the loop. So now we've got counter storing the number one, we can put that counter here so now it's going to say letter one of our name. But of course, each time we repeat this instruction, we want to increase the counter, we want to add one to the counter. So let's grab the change block here. So change the counter by one, which means make that counter go up by one. Let's put that inside our loop. So now we enter our name, Let's say our name is six letters long, so we're going to repeat it, repeat all of these instructions six times. So say the letter position of our name, and then change that position by one. So we're going to have counter as one to begin with, and so it'll say letter number one of our name. Then we add one to the counter, so now counter becomes two. So now we're saying letter two of our name and the letter three of our name, and so on. So we're combining a counter variable with a repeat block so that we can keep track of exactly where we are in the name. Let's just change this from two seconds to one second, so it's a little bit faster, and then run the game. Let's just stop and reset it. So run the game, what's your name? So let me type in my name again, so J-U-S-T-I-N, and press enter, and there we are, J, U S T I N. There we are. So that is spelling out our name. Let's run it again, in fact, with the alphabet very quickly, not all of it. Let's do A B C D E F G H I J. There we are. And so now that's 10 times it's going to repeat. So from A to J is 10 letters, and it's repeating something 
10 times. So although we didn't know when we wrote the program how many times the program was going to have to repeat, we can see that once it's running, it does then know how many times to repeat because we've given it the information it needs. Now, with that information, so now that we know how to find out the length of a string, and we know how to get a particular letter in a particular position in the string, and we can combine that with a loop, we're going to put all that together now into a palindrome checker. Now, if you don't know what a palindrome is, then in the next lesson, you'll learn something else as well, because I'll tell you what a palindrome is, as well as showing you how to code your own palindrome checker in Scratch. So if you're looking at this tutorial um, on the computerscience.click website here, where you can register for free and follow a whole range of courses for free, including this one on Scratch programming, there are built-in quizzes, and there are also, um, at the end of it, when you finish all the quizzes, a certificate with your name on it. So you can then have a look at uh, printing those off perhaps and getting recognition for having completed this course and knowing a lot more hopefully about programming. So um, that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson then we'll look at the palindrome checker. So when you're ready, I'll see you then. Bye for now.